Matt Menweller is, um, he's a representative, uh, he's a leading member, member of the Washington State Legislature, uh, and he's on the committee that considers workers' rights, uh, um, and he's come to the forefront because of, well, I'm going to see if I can show you on the screen, but I can show you better than I can tell you. Uh, so Matt Manweller, um, basically, he, so he's on the, on the committee to have the interest of workers' rights in mind, but he's against the minimum wage. And not only is he against the minimum wage, he's he's terribly vexed that the minimum wage uh, in Seattle uh, was raised to fifteen dollars an hour. Uh, and so, in the light of the 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 victory that most people consider this a victory, because you can't really like you can't live in Seattle on on a lot less than fifteen dollars an hour. Like you're still going to be struggling. And so most people consider this a victory. Matt Manweller, who's a representative, right? He's an elected official, and he's he's charged with working on behalf of workers' rights. Uh, most people are congratulating each other on the thousands of of Seattle minimum wage workers um, who actually got a victory. They got a raise, fifteen dollars an hour. And Matt Manweller, he tweets out, um, "No, it's not congratulations. It's actually condolences." to those who never who will never get hired because of the increase in the minimum wage. And apologies, this is actually his tweet, apologies to those who still believe in science. Uh, I don't know what the hell he was talking about there. I mean, maybe, maybe it was an inside joke. Uh, so Initiative 1433 uh, is the victory that they got. Uh, it's going to eventually raise the minimum wage to 1350 uh, in the state of Washington and provide employees the initial opportunity uh, to earn sick leave days. We actually have an article about this on the progressivearmy.com, um, and you should go check it out. It was uh, published by Andre Roberge. Uh, so it's a victory. It's a sure enough victory. And, you know, of course, you're going to always it's not it's not so much to be surprised that he's against it. It's the crass nature of his opposition. And and you'll see why we'll, we'll talk about it a little more. But there's always going to be people who forward this this idea that raising the minimum wage, which hasn't been raised to match the the efficiency of the workers or to match inflation. Right. So let's be let's be real. Minimum wage workers are due a raise, but you always have the opposition to it who say that the hike is going to uh, increase the cost of our burgers. And I always want to ask these people, like, they haven't really raised the minimum wage in a long time, and what I used to get for two ninety nine at McDonald's, you, you got to pay about nine ninety nine for now. So they raised the prices anyway, right? It's a it's a straw it's a red herring at best, right? Uh, because the price has prices have consistently increased. The the difference has gone to corporations. It hasn't gone to their labor, right? And we pick up the cost for labor for the lack of salary being paid to these workers. We pick it up by them being on our safety nets, food stamps, welfare, right? McDonald's in particular, Walmart also in particular, they don't make enough money at these organizations to actually live. And so corporations have been raising prices anyway. Anytime somebody asks you, oh, you want to pay more for your burger? Say, bitch, I've been paying more for my burger every year. Like every year my burger goes up. It's getting expensive. It gets very, very expensive to eat junk food and to, and to go shop at some of these, these big box stores, right? Because the prices have steadily increased. Yes, I think Walmart might actually buck that trend, but they buck it so hard that they can't even afford to maintain some basic things that help keep the store safe, right? There's a big expose on how Walmart tried to cut their prices so low that they could not even afford the same amount of workers. So it's like you're stuck in between all of these worlds. And, and, and let me finish that thought. I'm sorry. They could not afford the same amount of workers, and they no longer had the deterrent to all of the shoplifting that took place. And so now there's a massive amount of shoplifting that takes place because Walmart wants to maximize their profits at the expense of labor. 
And so you're going to always have corporations who do things uh, at the expense of labor. And that's why we elect officials who can basically represent the interests of the people against these large corporations. I mean, and I'm going to get back to Manweller in a second. But uh, now that we're on this conceptually, it's something we really we really have to discuss because, you know, we have big business. Let's let's. You know, let's let's do it very simplistically. Let's go to the kindergarten level. You have big business and big business is looking out for itself. Can we all agree to that? Right. I think everybody ideologically can agree that big businesses do what's in the best interest of the business. Republicans and conservatives and, and, and all neoliberals are going to try to convince you that what's in the best interest of the big business is also in the best interest of the body politic, the people and labor. That's bullshit, right? That's complete 100 percent bullshit. And that's why we no. Let me finish. Let me unpack it a little more. All right. Big businesses, they're, whatever's in the best interest of the big business is not necessarily in the best interest of the people, not be necessarily in the best interest of labor, and not necessarily in the best interest of the government. But conservatives and neoliberals want to convince you of that. All right, now you got that. Who can actually help protect us from big business? It's not the disparate individuals that make up America because individually we are subjected to massive marketing campaigns. We're almost like Pavlov's dog, right? Right. Jingle comes on. We're going to get up and go buy their shit because we've been inundated by all of the propaganda, all of the other words, otherwise known as marketing. We have been inundated and controlled by it. So who is going to actually represent the best interests of the people, labor and the body politic against biz, big business, particularly where the interests of big business are contrary to the interests of the people? Who's going to do it? It's supposed to be our politicians, but kiss my ass if you can find one right now who's actually doing it besides Bernie Sanders and his crew. So we elect these people to actually do what's in the best interest of the people, we the people, and they have always, without question, done what's in the best interest of big business. Big business doesn't need to be protected from the people. The people need to be protected from big business. All right, coming back to Matt Manweller. He's elected to represent the people, and he serves on a committee to actually serve labor. And in the face of something that's actually beneficial to labor, he spends it as something that's negative against labor. And he goes even further. Um, when he was asked about uh, minimum wage, he tweeted out um, to uh, Goldie H.A. He said, yes, zero would be the perfect minimum wage. And this is not a radical statement anymore. This is actually the position of many Republicans, libertarians. Many of them believe that the, the minimum wage is anti-business. And then they try to, this is what they try, they always try to sell you the spin. Read through the spin. The spin is this. If you have a minimum wage, it's going to prevent your teenagers from getting some starting jobs because nobody's going to hire your teenager at $15 an hour. Truth of the matter is, it's not teenagers who need the $15 an hour. It's the 70-year-old retiree who has no retirement. So we're not talking about kids, but they try to spin it that way. They say, oh, think about the babies. And you have, the, you know, in general, they feel like it's anti-business because it's, it's interfering with the markets. They believe in the free markets up until the point where it, it, it interferes with the profits of their donors. Right. So it's not even a free market thing. We have plenty of things that interfere in the free market to the benefit of big business. They just don't want you to interfere with the free market to the benefit of labor. I'm on one tonight, y'all. I'm feeling it tonight. All right. So now back to Manweller. He goes and says that it's the perfect minimum wage is zero. This is a person who's supposed to be representing labor, serves on a committee to represent the workers. And we have literally put the fox in the hen house. This guy has zero regard for labor, and yet he's representing labor. I mean, it's like getting, I don't know, I don't have anything to compare it to. It's like getting, it's like taking, uh, I don't want to use, I don't want to use drugs because there's a lot of addicts in the world. Um, 
It's, it's like putting Hugh Hefner in penthouse, right? He's clearly going to take advantage of penthouse because that's just, he's the vulture. It's like, you know, you, you, you put people, and this is why I have to be so careful on local elections because when you elect these local statewide officials or these local council members, you have to realize their nationalized ideology transcends locally. And so what they believe based on whatever the hell Rand Paul, Run Paul, whatever libertarian is feeding them about a zero minimum wage or no minimum wage, rather, or whatever conservatism is feeding them, they're going to bring that and they're going to nationalize your local politics based on that rhetoric. So you have to pay attention to these people like Manweller. So it even gets a little worse. Manweller actually was in an email exchange and um, and and I have the images. They'll be posted afterwards. Um, he was an email in, in an email exchange. Um, they were questioning him about zero as the minimum wage. And a constituent actually questioned Let me Actually, I think I have this image prepared. This is even better. Right. That's good. Um, the constituent was asking him about what do you mean? What do you mean about a zero minimum wage? That was um, that was done away with in at the end of the Civil War. Do I have it? Yeah, I do. Here we go. This is the exchange. Um, and of course, this email is li uh, is public, so that's why we have it there. In the exchange at the bottom, if you start at the bottom, the constituent is asking him about his tweet, zero as a minimum wage, sorry, but that was eliminated by the Civil War. He returns and says, add that to the list of mistakes that were made during the Civil War. Now, some people take this as a means of saying that he's comparing like a minimum wage to slavery. I'm not going to go that far. I'm not going to go that far. Um, I'm just going to say this just shows you how idiotic this elected representative is to crassly compare. Actually, no, let me double back. What the hell do you mean? What mistakes were made in the Civil War? See, now you got to clarify because I'm not going to give you the benefit of the doubt because honestly, what mistakes were made? The fact that we fought it or the fact that it was used to end slavery. What, you know, what, what mistakes uh, are you saying? The, the reconstruction, are you, are you, maybe you're saying that we should not have reconstructed the South and brought them back in. Is that what you're saying? Cause that puts you on the opposite side of the accusation, right? Where, where is it? Where are the mistakes in the civil war? See, I was going to be gracious for a second, but then I realized who I'm dealing with and the type of mentality of what we're dealing with. He needs to answer. He needs to answer and he needs to clarify because Statements, you know, that shit just doesn't. Uh, I have all kind of vernacular getting ready to come out for this dude. It, it just doesn't doesn't jive well with me, to be honest with you. It, it doesn't sit well with me for an elected representative uh, to to compare minimum wage to to the Civil War and to speak of the Civil War as if it was a mistake. Which part? So anyway, there was a um, um, there was a radio show that interviewed him. And actually, I think I have an image of this dude. Let me pull the image of this guy up so you can see um, how brilliant he <laughs> doesn't look. Yeah, I'm talking about how you look, bro. There you go. I got to change, move that TV. This, this, this guy. Anyway, um, so a radio host had a chance to speak with Manweller. Um, and uh, he is getting criticized by the working Washington, uh, by working Washington. And he said, quote, um, he said, I wasn't surprised to be getting criticized by working Washington, uh, which he considers to be a dishonest socialist front group. <gasps> oh, no. Socialism. He said to suggest that anyone support and these are actually the words of the radio host that interviewed him. Uh, he said to suggest that anyone support slavery or that people should not get paid for work is patently absurd. Uh, no one I know thinks this. Obviously, I don't think that uh, as to the mistakes made during the Civil War. Um, he said the mass killings of civilians during the New York draft riots. Uh huh. OK, I guess you're going to say I guess I could stop there and, and guess the rest. The march through Georgia through, uh, through Georgia. Uh, the burning down, you know, you know, all the, 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 the war crimes. So the war crimes part. 
Here's a problem. Okay, no, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and read the rest. Um, the rehiring of George McClellan after he was relieved of command, ignoring the writ of habeas corpus um, and the ex parte Merriman case. Yeah, that was a that was a uh, that was a you know I guess that was a mistake, war crime ish. <laughs> anyway, uh, using military tribunals to try civilians. I mean, he went. This dude, in order to to cover, let's be real, right? In order to justify this gross statement, he went and got his history book and looked up all the bad shit we did in civ- in the Civil War. Hmm. All right. He said, quote, I stand by my view that the minimum wage laws are harmful. They kill jobs, disproportionately hurt minorities, young people and immigrants. What I tell you, uh, simply put, minimum wage laws do more harm than good bullshit. The uh, this does not mean that people shouldn't get paid a fair wage for their work. It means free people should be allowed to freely negotiate their wages with other free people and come to a voluntary and mutually agreed upon wage, which I am sure he's against unions too. listening to this language. That's the way markets have always worked. No, the government has no business telling people what they can and cannot work for. OK. This goes back to the broken Piss poor ideology of libertarianism and um, more of your right leaning conservatives, far further right conservatives. They honestly think that the ideal situation is for you as an individual to negotiate with a corporation for your salary. Now, this works. This works if you are a head hunted CEO. This works great if you're like the elite of the elite with the Harvard education and the and the work at Goldman Sachs and you basically can write your check. It works great because you can go in and say, I expect to get paid 13 million dollars a year, but I also expect one hundred and eighty million dollars in stock options. This works great for you. You know who it doesn't work great for low wage workers. But yet they want to sell you the pipe dream that the free thing to do, the freedom thing, the freedom way is for you as an individual to be able to go and negotiate your wages. And if you want to take four dollars an hour for your wages, you should be able to take four dollars an hour for your wages. Without collective bargaining, the average worker is 100 percent screwed. Without a government fighting on behalf of labor, all of the American workforce, everyone who has to work for wages is 100 percent screwed. And we have elected people like Manweller, who looks like Bobo the Clown. We've elected the hens into the, the, the fox into the hen house. We've elected people who have zero interest in protecting the best interests of workers against corporations because let nobody fool you it is a battle every time you go to negotiate and most people don't even get a chance to negotiate what the hell am i talking about like i'm i'm in the privileged crowd that actually gets to sit down and negotiate my salary most people don't get a second to even consider they take whatever they can get and without leadership to actually fight on behalf of those people they will get taken advantage of by big business every single day and instead of doing what's in the best interest of the people for who, from whom they were elected and for whom they're supposed to represent, they always capitulate and serve big business. <laughs> and then they try to convince you with some freedom. Freedom, freedom says that you can negotiate for yourself. Go in there and negotiate the very best deal that you can. And, and, and that's the American way. No, the American way has been for elected politicians to forget about and erase the needs of their constituents so that they can buddy up with the corporations who donate money to their campaigns. That's the American way. And that's what we have to change.